How you doing? Late night crowd. This next show, I have been a fan of for quite some time. And because I am a person with certain degrees of influence and power, I got to bring him on my fucking ship. And now, I, I, as we prepared for the show, I realized I was faced with the task of trying to give you any sort of context <laughs> for this show and explain it. And I had no fucking idea how. Out of curiosity, by show of hands, how many of you do not know whatsoever what you are about to witness here? That's most of you. Luckily, I was, so I was struggling with how do I possibly set the scene for this event. But it was taken care of for me because they have asked me to read the following statement. After having Star Wars stolen from him by the Walt Disney Corporation in exchange for a paltry $5 billion, Retired filmmaker George Lucas began staging a series of self-financed test shows at the UCB Theater in New York City, finally giving him a platform to show off his skills as a talk show host. Having appeared in comedy films such as Beverly Hills Cop 3 and Steven Spielberg's Hook, he is excited to bring his brand of comedy and award-winning talk show to America's premier comedy venue, the World Stage Theater of the Holland America Line's MS New Amsterdam. <laughs> Grogu's and Gragras. <laughs> it is my pleasure to introduce the nautical debut of a very straightforward talk show with an extremely thin premise. And now to perform crowd warm up is Toydarian junk trader Watto. Happy birthday, Joko Cruz. I am Watto, the Toydarian slash warm-up comic slash announcer slash sidekick for the George Lucas talk show. Let's get a show of hands here. Who here has been on a boat? Patrick, what the fuck are you doing on stage? Just keep talking. I'm just prepping something. I'm trying to warm the audience up, and you're starting a flame in a different corner. They do not know where to go for warmth. <laughs> this is maybe the first show we've done in front of a live audience in over two years. <laughs> we did a very formal Comic Con panel at New York Comic Con. We were very excited. We thought they were going to book us in the big hall. And then they made the coin flip decision to give the big space on that night to Ghostbusters Afterlife instead. Ooh. Agreed. Agreed. Jason Reitman had to give Ghostbusters back to the fans. <laughs> he had to do it. Anyway, we did a panel celebrating the fifth anniversary of Ghostbusters Answer the Call. And that's the only time we've been on stage since 2020. <laughs> Here's the question I was going to ask. Who here has been on a boat before tonight? <laughs> okay, okay, impressive, impressive. And I know Paul asked, but who has been to a George Lucas talk show before? <laughs> wow. <laughs> one hand, one clap. <laughs> one of each, one person who likes to show, one person who likes to tell. 
Who here has been to any live TV show taping before? <laughs> Great. And I need to introduce nothing else. You know exactly how this is going to work. Uh, what do you do if something really funny happens? <laughs> yes. Yes. And what do you do if you're impressed by something that just happened? Like it blew you away. <laughs> right. And what if you, you need to show respect? I understand my prompt was a little vague, but <laughs> meows in a hard first, <laughs> trailed significantly by snaps, dead last claps, <laughs> is a pretty good summation of Joko energy. <laughs> I don't know. Let's start the fucking show, right? <laughs> now you can touch your computer. Retired filmmaker George Lucas. Standing ovation, you ungrateful apes! This is Academy Award nominee George Lucas! The real George Lucas! Billionaire film and technology disruptor! So this is Patrick Cottner. He's our producer. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello, I'm George Lucas, creator of Star Wars. <laughs> Welcome to the George Lucas Talk Show. Uh, it's very, it's delightful. Uh, hello, Watto. Hello, Patrick. Hi, George. Hello, George. Nice to see you at sea. It's nice to see. I oh, is that a joke? Nice to see you. That's very funny. Thank you. <laughs> it's incredibly fun. I don't know if, if, if you enjoy that kind of word-based comedy. We'll have more of that in the show. I really like that, Watto. Thank you. We try not to dissect the comedy too much on this show. There's the term dissecting the frog. Right. Sometimes if you take a joke apart, it stops being funny. Right. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to stop being funny, do we? Am I right? But the joke was that I said, nice to see you, George. Yeah. And we're at, we're at sea, essentially. We're at we're sea. We're at boat. So that's very funny. It's very funny. Uh, it's Spell a good joke. Fun. And I, I'm Spell sorry if we're dissecting the frog a bit. Uh, we don't want to stop being funny. We want to continue being we funny to, throughout. We'd actually like to make new jokes that are also funny. Right. That would be great if we could keep making new jokes throughout the show. Yes. Uh, Patrick. Yeah. You are decked out from head to toe yeah. in Pepsi promotional gear from Indian Jones in the Last Crusade. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. I showed up tonight to the show. George and I had not talked beforehand. And we found out that George and I were wearing the same shirt. Same shirt. And I had brought uh, these clothes in case we needed them for a bit. But then I realized I don't want to wear the same shirt as George. So I decided to put on this merch. And you look adorable. Give it a little spin. Walk out and give it a little spin. A little fashion show. Do a little these fashion are, show. 
their Indiana Jones promotional uh, gear brought to you by Pepsi, who ended up not being the sponsors of Indiana Jones' Last Crusade. They made that on spec. How foolish. They were yeah. so calm. It's not even like Patrick's wearing a rare prototype. They produce like tens or hundreds of thousands of these items. Yeah. You can get them on eBay real cheap. Really yeah. cheap. Real, oh, real cheap. To have the confidence of a Pepsi. <laughs> so confident. How uh, many, uh, just ask yourself, how many sets of Indiana Jones clothing would you be willing to make on spec? Not many, I bet. <laughs> oh, I envy Pepsi being that confident. Now, in the name of adding more comedy to the show. Yeah, because we'll continue to add comedy to the show throughout the course of the show. You'll notice it's additive. We won't remove comedy from the show. No, we want to mm -hmm. add. When I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Star Wars films, that I would add things to them over time, and they would always make them a little funnier. Yeah. <laughs> like the, fir the test print that, uh, that I released in theaters in 1977, just a work print, just to gauge people's opinions had less comedy than it does now because I've added more comedy over time. And, th and that's a little bit the vibe of what we're going to do tonight throughout the Absolutely. show. Absolutely. Now, I've been telling you guys, and we didn't want to preload things, right? We no, we didn't want to preload anything. We don't pre this. This is a show where it's very organic. We like to see what happens. But I did say a couple days ago, Watto has a pretty big joke. Oh, that's right. Watto did tell us, and he wouldn't tell us what the joke was. He says, I have a pretty big joke for the show. I started referring to it as Watto's big joke. He yeah. said if we got to a point in the show where we didn't think we had heard Watto's big joke to say, hey, Watto, isn't it time for Watto's big joke? But I said I'd like to say it at the top. That's yeah. a yeah. fail safe in case I forget to say it yeah. at the beginning of the show. And this wasn't the nice to see you joke that I complimented before. This that is a new one, right? off the dome. You're kidding me. Really? I'm not. Wow. <laughs> in fact, as you may remember, if you roll back the tape, I originally said Nice to see you at sea. And then Great. you kind of punched up my joke, and we all pretended I had said the funnier <laughs> version the first time. Yeah, I can't help it. I can't help it. I make right. it. It was a little special edition of your joke. Thank you. But Great. this this joke, Watto's big joke, what yeah. we've been talking about is Watto's big joke. This joke has been refined. Oh, that's very exciting. Do okay. you need, what do you need from us? What do you need from, uh, do you need anything from the audience or from me and from Patrick? Well, uh, Patrick, can you step out to the center of this stage? Oh. oh. <laughs> All right. This is going to be fun. Yeah, take a mic with you. Okay. Now, Patrick, we had you wear this Indiana Jones getup. Yeah. Can you describe what your attire has been for most of the week? Uh, oh, it's been, uh, <laughs> it's mostly been Hawaiian shirts and similar shorts to this. Okay. And people are absorbing Patrick's basic vibe, his energy, all of this, the way he's holding himself right now. Yeah. I just want to make sure there's a proper runway for Watto's big joke. <laughs> okay, are we all feeling ready? You know, George, when I came out, the audience was very kind. They said, happy birthday, Watto. Mm -hmm. Congratulated me on my, my boat birthday. But there's another type of congratulations in order. I don't know if our audience know this, but uh, our own producer, Patrick Kotner, really, uh, well, he recently became a dad. Wow. Do you have anything to say to that, Patrick? I, I have not become a dad. <laughs> you have. I'm not saying that you recently had a child. Uh -huh. I'm saying you've been acting like a fucking dad this entire cruise. <laughs> Walking around with your Hawaiian shorts, making funny jokes to the crew members. <laughs> Big dad energy. I thought of this joke four days ago. I said, what if I, how can I word this? Recently became a father. Mm -hmm. No, he has to be dad because yeah. he's acting like a fucking boat dad. <laughs> he knocks on my door to wake me up. <laughs> it's true. Wait, so Patrick was the big joke all along? Well, you know what? This is a great point, George, because <laughs> for me, in my mind, the big joke was saying he's recently become a dad, letting the audience think that he had a hand in the birth of a new child no. or perhaps an adoption, <laughs> no. and then revealing, no, I'm just saying he's acting like a father. That was what I thought the big joke was, was saying that. But you're right, George. It, the joke might be Patrick himself. 
They're laughing. The biggest joke of all. They're laughing. I mean, this is what I've always wanted. <laughs> Laughter. Wow. The big joke. Big joke. Wano's big joke, everybody. Wano's big joke. George, we should bring out our guests. Well, it's a talk show, and we don't just talk to each other. We have guests, and we have great guests on this show. So, uh, Wano, do you want to go ahead and introduce the guests? I do. Grogu's and Gragas, we got the hot show tonight. Hot show. Please welcome to the stage, Gail Simone and Shalewa Sharp! <laughs> Also, as our guest said to Lynn, if someone from uh, Lady Killer can help me, uh, I, I polished off my water here and could use something harder. Uh, would it be possible to get a, uh, a Jartini, Jartini, Binkstini? Is that the thing we could do? I won't hold up the show, but they'll get that for me at some point. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Leave it right there. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the George Lucas Talk Show. It's so I, I'm so thrilled to to have uh, two such uh, fine guests as, as yourselves on the show. Uh, how are you enjoying? How are you enjoying the cruise so far? Well, I'm enjoying the cruise, but holy shit, my agent had booked this, and I thought it was my favorite murder. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Well, we're not going to be talking about murder. I mean, Patrick might kill a few of the jokes with his timing. <laughs> So it's possible. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you should know, Gail, I understand the confusion. My favorite murder, one of the most popular, successful, beloved podcasts there is. Uh, our show has been called the worst podcast <laughs> on the planet. Yeah, we're, we're not a podcast, so we're this not. criticism did not sting when someone said it we didn't. were the worst podcast ever made. We're not a podcast. It's so like when someone says to me, you're terrible at, at being a professional basketball player. And I go, I never even tried. <laughs> well, let's get it right started. Since you prepared for this, do you have a favorite murder? <laughs> no, no, I have, no I, murders I have one. are my favorite. I, I have one. Oh, okay. Yeah. When, uh, when Darth Vader killed his boss. Threw him down the, uh, threw him, uh, just picked him up, like a, you know, like when you, how you pick up a turtle and they can't do anything? Uh, he uh, picked him up, and it was like, this is the most powerful guy in the galaxy, but if you sneak up behind him, pick him up, he's like, ah, he can't do anything about it. <laughs> Throw him down a thing. He didn't die, but he died later. His uh, uh, granddaughter killed him. Um, Darth is such an asshole. But it, 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 for all intents and purposes, he is. You know, that's the thing. People, people think he's a cool bad guy. He's really an asshole. Like, Darth Vader is such an asshole. That's, it's such a good way of putting it. And people don't ever say that. You know, they say he's evil. They say he's a murderer. He kills children. He's also a huge asshole. Talk about an abusive workplace. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's a good example. Do you like the murder of the emperor, or do you like the murder of Darth Vader? Well, he sort of just petered out, didn't he? Like, Darth Vader just sort of like, ugh. I, I, I can say with confidence my least favorite murder is when Anakin murdered all the younglings. Oh. That's oh, bottom I don't know. of my murder list. Yeah. Do you have a favorite murder now? Um. Doesn't have to be a Star Wars murder. It could be anybody. <laughs> you brought up murder, Gail. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to talk I'm about this. About you said I wanted to talk about my favorite murder. You said you were prepared for it. And you, you're, I'm sorry, I don't mean to put you on the hot seat. You're going to have to name a favorite murder. <laughs> Were you going to come out here if this was my favorite murder and really just show them up? I, I don't have any preference for murders. Now, now I wonder if this had been my favorite murder, if you would have come out and started ranking your favorite Star Wars movies. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I'm usually confused. <laughs> Do you want to do you want to pass and we'll come back to you? Well, I do write a lot of violence in my work, but murders. I try, yeah, well, I try to get right up to the murder or something worse than murder. So I really don't like murder. So, like an example of that would be like when Obi Wan just sort of like chopped off his friend's arms and legs and just left him there. Not a murder. <laughs> Pretty bad. Pretty Not a bad. murder. Actually, worse. If you think about it, like it should have just like finished him off? Could be. Yeah, but you go right up to the line of murder and then you pull away. Yeah, or go past it into something worse. Yeah. yeah. Mm. 
I'm kind of an asshole, too. <laughs> the fact that you say that makes me think that you're not, though. Because that's not something assholes say. That's what good people, good people with, with, with consciences say that. There's no scene where Darth Vader goes to Admiral Piat and goes, Am I an asshole? <laughs> People in the yeah, office just think, think I'm an <laughs> asshole. Just think how much better the movie would be if he did that. A yeah, little introspection. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh. He gets out of his egg. That egg he goes to steam in <laughs> when he needs to take a break in the middle of the world. Let me take off my helmet and steam in this egg. <laughs> goes to pee at He's like, I, I got to thinking in the egg. Am I an asshole? He posts to Am I the Asshole on Reddit. <laughs> we were having a boardroom meeting and this guy really pissed me off and I choked him. <laughs> Am I the asshole? <laughs> I, technically, I didn't touch him. <laughs> I swear I didn't touch him. I did choke him. Uh, do you have do you have a favorite murder? Do you Me? have a fa yeah? Me? Do you have a favorite murder? No, no, no. I I, I didn't realize that that. You didn't that think that you were coming true. on a murder podcast, so I forgive you for that. Okay, I I didn't. <laughs> Not um, like uh, Gail here. Gail here is coming out to do some mischief on the murder podcast. <laughs> no preference for murders. <laughs> it it would have driven them crazy if you came out and said I like everything but you know like I just go right up to the line of murder and then no murder. <laughs> Gail, I have a question. You said sometimes you do things that are worse than murders. What does what does that entail? <laughs> like what what is worse than a murder? That's oh. a genuine question. <laughs> well, I have I don't know. Anybody read Clean Room? <laughs> is that a threat? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and Gail, to make you feel better, I don't murder in real life. Okay, sure. this yeah, is sure, just sure. on fiction. the page. Yes, yeah, yeah. This fictional fiction. murders. Fictional murders. Torture. Fictional, <laughs> fictional torture. Yeah. Yeah. Fictional torture. Yeah. Fictional um, creating of fetishes come to life that okay. are horrible. Yeah. yeah. You, you wrote some Suicide Squad, did you not? I did a little bit, but mostly I wrote a book called Secret Six, which is a little like it. But they're also not great. They're, they're not great. They do not great things. They do not great right. things. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Bad guys. <laughs> We're fascinated by them, aren't we? we <laughs> just people who do bad things. What is it about what us? What is it about what them? What is it about us? We're drawn to the bad guys. <laughs> by the way, I want to read the back of this promotional Taco Bell cup. <laughs> Watto is a junk dealer who lives on the remote desert planet of Tatooine. Watto loves haggling and betting on pod races more than anything. Betting on a pod race is how he won his two slaves, Anakin and Shmi Skywalker from Gardula the Hutt. KFC Taco Bell Pizza Hut. Why do we like bad guys? <laughs> what is it about bad guys? I can't think of an example, but sometimes we take unsavory characters and we put them on merchandise for children and don't even hide it. We spell it out. We remind the kids while they sip milk. That they too could become a slave at any yes. moment. Yes, a gambling addict and a human trafficker. What is it about these bad guys we like so much? An I, audience on the cruise ship sits laughing at these bad guys. I really hope we're not letting children sip milk that they purchased at a Taco Bell. <laughs> That's a bad guy <laughs> move. Fair dose. Uh, that's terrible. Yeah. That's a lot of milk. <laughs> that's a, a lot price. of milk. Big boy of like, milk. <laughs> go yeah. to Taco Bell. I'll have a milk, please. What size? Well, what's the biggest size you've got? <laughs> you raise a fair point. You want anything point, else? Nope. Just give me the milk in the cup with the slave owning tornado in. <laughs> milk has always been the favorite drink with tacos. <laughs> milk and tacos, baby. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt. This is a fantastic discussion about murder and bad guys. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. But I, I kind of thought I was here to talk about the Step Up series. Is that <laughs> not? Step Up series? 
Yeah, you you made the movies, right, with the dancing? No, I didn't make those movies, but I'm a fan. You like the Step Up series, yeah, right? Yeah, like Step Up, yeah. Channing Tatum. Step Up to the Streets, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Step Up to the Streets, yeah. Step Up Upward 3D. Evolution. Yeah. yeah, Step Up, uh, always yeah. saving a thing. Yeah. yeah. Like a place. Yeah. Like a community They're going to destroy the building. we got to dance for it. Oh, man. There's a okay. development company. They're coming in here. They're going to ruin this thing we have. we got to dance for it. Yeah. 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 Moose. Moose. You remember I Moose. I remember Moose. We got any Moose heads no. in the house tonight. Who's here with the Moose? No one? No. Okay. No other Moose heads. We were excited about I was it. very excited about Moose. Breakout oh, character of the Step Up franchise. <laughs> he really was. He was he a sleeper. He kind of ties all the movies together. Yeah, he really does. You got to follow it. The, the little girl who was in Missy Elliott videos, yes. who is now... Allison Stoner? Yes. Yes. Wow. 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 Boat dad for the win. <laughs> <laughs> Does your daughter, is it the new kid that you had? Is that is your daughter? Are they a big so fan I'm of hers? I'm teaching her to dance in Mary J. Oh Lodge my videos, goodness. too. Yeah. Um, well, all well, right. We can talk. This is a flexible format show. Okay. As, as we've proven, we can talk about murder. We can talk about stepping up. Well, I, I don't know if you have any plans to make any uh, new movies. Um, I've been I, out of the game for a while. Thank you. Is this Rory Rogers? I, I feel like if you wanted to get back into it. Oh, thank you. Um, that's Paul, is there part. any milk? <laughs> is there any milk? Extra, extra large. <laughs> also, Paul, Paul, I'm getting close to finishing this. Can I get the uh, Cosmopolitan in Skywalker, please? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> have, have you considered... Um, and and I understand that uh, this life's work has been ripped from your hands. I get yeah. that. Um, but have you considered doing reasonable facsimiles of these characters, but dancing well. to save whatever <laughs> it was that they were supposed to be saving? I'm a little I'm a little fuzzy on the details. A community but center. I mean, as you yeah, said, so maybe yeah. a right. yeah. And what is what makes us think of community more than the fandom of the Star Wars films? What a what a harmonious community it turned out to be. <laughs> <laughs> when you think Every of people time. who yes. take who take Star Wars, it's really been building this community where people can just exchange their views. <laughs> Every time, I don't know if you feel so this way, George. Every time I go into a Star Wars subreddit, I get confused for a second. Thank you. I get confused for a second. That's enough. I say, I look around the subreddit and I go, is is this a YMCA? <laughs> This feels like a public this utility. This is such a, a galvanizing force for good in the community. <laughs> yes. This subreddit. <laughs> Everyone's working together. There's outreach. That's right. A healthy exchange of ideas. <laughs> yes. Someone says, I like this. And immediately dozens of young men are eager to express an alternate view. But with dance. But with dance. But with dance. Uh, you're asking me now that because I've been I've been in the museum business. I've been building my museum in Los Angeles, getting sure. ready to open in 2023, the Lucas Museum of Narrative Arts. Uh, this is about pictures that tell stories, uh, you know. And and Gail, you certainly know about. I mean, you're using words in your comics, so that's cheating. But I'm talking about. <laughs> well, it's it's not really cheating, it, but it is part of your your you work in narrative art. Comics is narrative art, and there are paintings that tell stories. And there are going to be comics in the museum. There are also sometimes Taco Bell cups that tell yeah. stories. Taco Bell, uh, Taco Bell cups tell stories. Art can be about storytelling. And so I, that, that's what I've been focused on. So I haven't made a film for public release in a long time. I've been, I just, you know, it's different. It's a different world now. I but mean, you raise an interesting point. I could make new films that were just different enough if every time they were going to fight or chase each other, they would dance instead, that's different enough that I think legal would say these are not Star Wars movies. I mean, George, I, I don't think many people would say these are many not people. Star Wars yeah. movies. <laughs> I dare say. <laughs> these are not Star Wars movies. I mean, there are important decisions to be made. Who will stand in the rain with their arms outreached? Like, they just. Oh. As uh, you know, you got to think about that scene. That's in every dance movie scene. There's That's dancing right. in the rain. Um, it, I, you got to decide what 
each small creature dies, which galvanizes everybody. Yeah, small creatures. Okay, I know you. I know you like the small creatures. I love Kill one of and them. And it's very sad. There's a scene in one of the Star Wars movies where one of the small creatures dies, and then one of the other creatures comes over and is like, "Come on, let's go." And he turns back, and he's like, "My friend is dead. <laughs> My friend is dead." And then dance. And then they yeah. dance. He doesn't yeah. dance about it. It cuts away before he dances about yeah, it. Yeah, that's what you, you got to include the dance. But, but George, yeah. they all dance at the end of that movie. Yeah, they dance around. Yeah, yeah. they dance around, they but dance I around, need but choreography. Not, sure. Nothing is going to save a community center. They, they dance <laughs> like this. <laughs> like, I think it's fair to say they do not step up. No, no, no. one's stepping up. They're stepping. They're stepping, but they but it's not step up. up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I have a question for Gail. Gail, comics is a brutal racket. We all know it's a brutal racket, right? <laughs> Sometimes a, a series gets canceled prematurely that you love. Have you ever written anything that you were proud of that didn't get published? Like, have you written script for series that got canceled prematurely where you were just like, this is the best, this is where this is going, is so exciting, and still no one has ever seen it. The public has not seen it. <laughs> You are making a large assumption that I would be writing a script that far ahead. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I like the way you work, Gail. <laughs> yes. Um, I have things that, like, particularly in the Wonder Woman book where um, I had plans beyond uh, where it ended, but, you know, that's always a, a thing that can happen when you're writing a, a licensed character, so... Um, you know, sure, but nothing you, too You try brutal. to focus on the task at hand. Uh, you keep an idea of where you would go, but you focus on what you, you know you have to work on at that moment. Yes, and then I keep it in the back of my mind for maybe if something later down the road comes up where I can complete that story, which has happened as well. So not to ask a leading question, but it sounds like you never found yourself in a position where you felt so good about the idea you had for a series that you commissioned like 80 or 90 scripts <laughs> and, and out of your own pocket. You were just like, someone will buy these. <laughs> and you commissioned all those scripts and then they were so good that you were like, let's just start drawing up the first like 39. <laughs> and you hired people and they colored them, they inked them, they, did, they finished everything, they set the type. And then you were just surprised when you had 39 finished issues there and no one wanted to do anything. You've never found yourself in that position. Uh, no. Okay, Shalewa, same question. <laughs> um, but with jokes, with jokes. Oh, with jokes. jokes. Do you oh. ever write like 80 jokes? <laughs> no. And then, and then and like I feel like that's, a, that's, a, that's full stop. No. <laughs> no. No. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Patrick, anything you relate to? No, I don't think so. George, same question. Yeah. I'm afraid, I, I envy you that you'd never have gotten that far uh, ahead of your skis, so to speak, uh, project-wise. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a very sad story to tell you that I think will, I think will be uh, enjoyable for the evening if I tell this story. I, I, the last project I worked on before I retired, before I sold the whole kit and caboodle, I uh, decided to produce, to self-finance and produce 39 fully animated episodes of uh, a Star Wars animated comedy show called Star Wars Detours. I just assume this is a winner. I'll, let's just make them. We don't need a network yet. We'll finish the show, and then someone will want this. And then I sold it all to Disney because there was a tax situation I was trying to deal with. And I had to sell it quick. And I just assumed, you know, well, you're going to want to show the Star Wars comedy show I made. I got 39 completed episodes. And then I, I don't even know if I can tell you what happened to those episodes because... Disney took all 39 completed episodes and they put them on a shelf. They put them on a shelf in a vault and then they locked the door and no one's ever seen them. What do you think of that? That damn Disney vault. There was, I don't know if the two of you heard about this. There was a global pandemic. <laughs> Uh, a what now? A global pandemic, a novel coronavirus. Oh, sure. That brought society to its knees, and the entertainment industry was freaking out. We pivoted to streaming. We don't have enough content. Right. Disney had 39 completed episodes of a George Lucas TV show, 
at the time when nerds were yelling, why won't they let George Lucas make more Star Wars? They could have released them at any moment with the push of a button, <laughs> and they didn't, and they still haven't. They've been on a shelf for a decade. George, you were in the writer's room. I was in the writer's room. We were breaking jokes. <laughs> That's what you say, right? We're breaking the jokes. <laughs> right? You, you, you toss the ball around in the writer's room. Sure. You cut it yeah. up. You yeah. mix yeah. it up. What's funny? Let, let's see something funny. What if, what if this? What if that? And whatever makes us laugh, that's a joke, right? I, I believe that is how Whatever that makes us laugh, that's yeah. a joke, mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah, so I imagine you probably broke a lot of jokes. I feel like yeah. everything that you said was probably very funny to your staff. George, give yeah. us a joke. Give us a joke, George. What? Just give us a joke. Well, I, that's not how it works, Patrick. You gotta, you gotta start a rhythm. Like, what do we wanna make a joke about? Um, the, the ocean. The ocean? Yeah. All right. Well, in Star Wars, there's a whole planet that's just ocean. <laughs> <laughs> George, you've you done park? it again. Where do you, where do you, where do you park? <laughs> in the ocean? Were well, you going to fly a boat through space? That's a good joke. What are you? What are you doing? You a boat, you a boat space? Per what are you doing? <laughs> you you well, know where to park here. And on the shelf, you say. Yeah, they put it up on the shelf. <laughs> that's what I said. That is a shame. Yeah, it's a real shame. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man. Gail, did you like that joke? Or it's okay if you didn't. Yes, I like that joke. Yeah, oh, okay. No, I liked it. That's great. But, you know, on Oh, there's a butt? What's yeah. the, wait, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I can see another side. Let's hear it. What's the other side? A dark side. <laughs> a dark <Yeah>. side. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the side of where it's in a vault. Why it's in the vault? You yeah. see the side of, of why it's in the vault. Too yeah. funny? Yeah. Too funny. Disney. Too dangerous? Like, what yeah. if people are watching this while they're driving their cars? They laugh and drive right off the road. Exactly. Or they pee their pants while but on their, their couch. Pants. Yeah. That's terrible. You got to get a new couch. You got to get new pants. Yep. But that's also a funny joke you could put in the show. <laughs> like, people. <laughs> cut to the people. deeper in the vault? Oh, you're saying the funnier the show's got. This is your theory. Yes. The funnier the show's got, the deeper in the vault Disney put mm. them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> is this I, the traditional. Disney vault where they keep the VHS copies of the cartoon? Yeah. Or is this a vault within a vault? Like, how badly do they want you in a vault? I mean, you're talking to me like I've done a heist and <laughs> seen the schematics. They do not show the Thank schematics you. for that Disney vault to anybody. For all we know, it goes right to the center of the earth. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, all those VHS copies, every time they'd like release Pinocchio and then stop selling it, and Pinocchio would go back in the vault. Yes. All those VHS copies. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Uh, Paul, I I'm sorry, Paul, I could use another drink. Can I have a Boscow mule, please? Like Bosk, the bounty hunter Bosk. The no. lizard man in the yellow jumpsuit, and I can find his name with the Moscow mule. It's a Moscow mule. Do you want to zuck a shooter with it? Yes, please. Okay. Paul, I don't know if there's any more milk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just thought of a very funny joke. <laughs> I don't want to tell the joke until George is finished drinking the milk because I don't want the milk to shoot out his nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the milk is gone. I mean, I think if you tell the joke and we're very quiet, we'll be able to listen okay. to George's stomach react. Can I tell the joke? <laughs> and no, George, can you hold the mic up to your stomach when <laughs> I tell the joke? Now, George, Wano, we want to get the audience involved in this. Yeah, show. let's get Patrick, the audience. Patrick, I was about to tell a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to get the audience involved after my joke. I just, Jeez, I heard your last joke. <laughs> This isn't a big joke. This is a joke that just came to me. Okay, Remember when we were talking about the Walt Disney Vault? And I, how I many things they put in the vault? Yes. And how deep the vault goes? Mm -hmm. They should call it the Vault Disney <laughs> Company. <laughs> Watto, what kind of groupies do you have? <laughs> I said, what? What kind of groupies do you have? Oh, do they like puns, for instance? 
I'll say this. When Watto is, is thinking about getting some strange, it's really strange. <laughs> <laughs> like deeply, like incalculably strange. <laughs> like bizarre. I go, I'm going to get some bizarre tonight. <laughs> that's, that's Watto on the town. Uh, Patrick, what were you saying? Oh, my gosh. We yeah, want to get the audience involved tonight. Yeah, we're going to give prizes out to the audience. And we're going to get, uh, there's fun things are going to happen. But yeah. uh, do you want to set this up, Patrick? Okay, we were trying to think of things. We were like, what can we do on this boat that we haven't been able to do in other places? We were talking to Paul. We said, Paul, what is a, what's a large quantity of something you have related to the Joko Cruise that we can give out to the audience? Right? Well, we we almost asked, what, what can you not even give away? You have <coughs> sure. so much of it that you sure. can't get rid of it, even yeah. for free. So... Paul said, well, we have something. We've had them for a while. What we have are 2,000 temporary tattoos. <laughs> and and, and I want to I be clear. Uh, originally, we said, you know, uh, well, we want to give a, a tattoo to everybody. What yeah. if we give everybody a, a present? That would be we nice, said, right? We have enough tattoos for the entire capacity of the main stage. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I said, I don't think we'll get 2,000. I don't think we'll get 2,000. You know, it's too many people. Yeah. And so then we thought, wouldn't it be more fun, instead of giving out everybody gets one temporary tattoo, what if we ask if there's someone who's willing to apply as many of the temporary tattoos as possible <laughs> to themselves live on stage here tonight? Now, I have a bucket of water. I have washcloths. Yeah. Is there anyone who is willing to put as many temporary tattoos? Okay, we got one already. Look at this. Come on up. Immediate in the second row. Immediate. Immediate. Come on up here. Right. Now, here's the other thing. I don't know if you came with anybody. We need someone to apply these. <laughs> it's a two-person You test. have someone that you feel comfortable applying the tattoos, a friend. Maybe I'll let, do you want me to let you pick? Do you want me to, I can ask, if, does anyone want to apply these tattoos? And then we'll let her choose. We need someone. There's a point. Yeah, come on up. Trustworthy. Right. Trustworthy. Trustworthy. <laughs> trustworthy. 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 Okay, now here's the right. other thing. I think we need someone to count these and like keep track of how many are going we on. We need the proctor. Yeah. Would someone do that? Someone count the tattoos as they're applied. It's, it's simple. Something with a uh, mathematical yeah. mind. Yes. Yes. Great. This is honestly the easiest job of the three. Now, okay. uh, for participating in this, I want to ask the three of you: Do do any of you have uh, record players, vinyl record players? Any of the three of you? You do? Yes. Do you have a record player? All right, great. We're going to give you a applicator. We're going to give you a copy of uh, the weirdest record you're ever going to own. This is the George Lucas Talk Show original soundtrack. <laughs> this features uh, our theme music by Ryan Miller from Guster. Uh, it features Robert Wool from Arliss. Uh, it features Rachel Zegler from West Side Story singing Ray's theme. It features Lisa Loeb singing a song she made up about Hanna Barbera. It's a very rare record, and it, it's very strange. You won't understand any of it. <laughs> Great for parties. So I think the rules are when we're done, we're just going to count it up. Yeah, yes. we'll count it out when we're done. Yes. So we're asking the proctor to keep track of the backing paper from the tattoos. That's the best metric. It That's how we about. verify. Right. Uh, I'm just going to say go, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Patrick, why don't you just say go? You do, hey, hey, you do whatever you gotta do. do we have you figure it out. Yeah, but the first seat, just to be clear, that's not one tattoo, that's whatever, it's eight tattoos. Yeah, yes, but the, yes. All right, all right. Absolutely. I think all a right. great decision. Wow, a little bit of drama on stage left, huh? <laughs> wow. Yes, okay, here it is. You can also, you can overlap, obviously. Sure, you do whatever you gotta do, and go. Let's go back to the show. It's yeah, also not a timed back. event, Patrick. Why were you so concerned about saying well, go? Well, it is a timed event because the show ends at some point. Well, I know, but we're all going to die, too. But this is life isn't a timed <laughs> event. <laughs> Obviously, the show's going to end. What do you think people agreed to? Eternity in here? Patrick wakes up. He springs awake. He goes, oh, no, I'm on the clock. <laughs> it's every a timed day, event, this every mortal day coil. Every day is a timed event. I wake up and I say, Go! That's where we got it. Yeah. Wow. Now the entire white of the paper came Wait, off. That's the size of the tattoos? 
Oh, it's a whole sheet of tattoos. Let's, All right. Yeah. How, how many are there per sheet, Proctor? Seven per sheet. Seven per sheet. Okay, so we're going multiples of seven. I think this is a smart strategy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gail, yeah. what's it like writing Batgirl? Is it fun? It is fun. It what do you like most? Because here's the thing. I, a lot of my early movies, uh, the female characters were not strong. Uh, and so, like, Carrie made Princess Leia into a much stronger character than I think I had uh, conceived her to be. I'm sure that's true. And did you know one thing? <laughs> did, did you know that when I, uh, here, okay, while we're razzing on me, did you know that, did you know that in Return of the Jedi, there were a bunch of female uh, X-Wing fighter pilots and I cut them all out of the movie? You bastard! I know, but I'm, tr but I'm trying to be better. <laughs> like I just asked you, what's it like writing Batgirl? That shows progress, <laughs> right? I didn't ask. Why did you write Batman instead of Batgirl? I said, well, I, well, let's talk about Batgirl. Yeah, like you couldn't believe that that would be an actual job. No, I think it'd be fun. Oh. I don't think I would have been good at it in my prime because I wasn't, I wasn't in the right frame of mind for it. I'd love to write a Batgirl now. <laughs> I have to be way cooler than Batman. He's kind of a rich jerk. <laughs> right? Right. Writing Batgirl is super fun. And in fact, I always thought that Batgirl was the smartest and um, the smartest Bat character of all. Way smarter, smarter than, than Bat ba Baby? Way smarter than Bat Baby. Smarter than Bat Baby? <laughs> smarter than Bat Baby. But smarter about, than Batman. But Bat Baby, think about like relatively speaking oh for a baby. Oh my God, George, you're fired. What? No Bat writing. I, but... I'm thinking like babies are learning so fast. Like they're dumb, but they're learning so much. <laughs> but you're, I take your argument. So, so Batgirl is the smartest of the Bat people, the smartest of the Bat family. In my opinion, yes. What, why do you think that is? Do you think Bruce Wayne was coddled? <laughs> no, I just think that he has some psychological issues that get in the way sometimes. Right? Yeah. Going to the, going to the theater, like parents get killed. That's going to mess you up, no matter how much money you've got, right? That yeah, is, and then you're going to become obsessed with uh, criminals. So, But we're not here to talk about Batman. Let's talk about Batgirl. Yeah, right. She's the best. What what surprised you most when you uh, started writing Batgirl? Were there any things that you, that you really thought like, oh, this is, a, this is an exciting thing I hadn't anticipated about the character? Um, <laughs> the exciting thing for me was being able to write her in the first place, because when you're a little girl and you live on a teeny town, teeny farm in a outside of a teeny town and everything is you know chores and rain and golf or bowling on the television or news yeah and then all of a sudden Batgirl comes on the screen and she's got red hair and she's smart and she kicks ass um, that is like a revelation so then you know cut to all those years later being able to write her that's pretty fucking exciting yeah you know <laughs> Gail, you, you mentioned the hair in particular, and I know you worked in hair before moving to writing, right? Yes. And I, I like much of how you interact with fans on Twitter. I think you are better at it than almost anyone in the nerd sphere. But the thing I love is when nerds come at your mentions getting pedantic about hair colors in comics, <laughs> and you can back it the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on, what are nerds? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> okay, please no. Look, no. I have lactate oh. in my bag backstage, man. <laughs> you gotta finish it now, George. You can't stop now. You can't stop now. Oh, he's so close. He's so close. Why well, don't make him laugh? Make him laugh, Watto. Paul. <laughs> Paul. Ali. Paul. Cut Paul. him off. Cut Paul. him off. Cut Paul. him off. Cut Paul. him off. Paul. Don't get him. Paul. Don't get him. Paul, come here. Paul, is there any more milk? <laughs> Let me see what I can do. Cut him off. Cut him off. <laughs> no. no. I'm good for now, thank oh, you. Oh, boy. Thank you, Paul. Oh man, I grew up on a dairy farm and this is getting to me bad. Right. <laughs> well, okay, here's the question. I wasn't even leading this. I wasn't teeing this up, but now I'm thinking, okay? Uh-oh. George, a famously gray-haired man. 
And the a man who went gray pretty young. Gray beard. There's a lot of gray here. What would you do <laughs> with the hair situation on George's head? <laughs> if given the canvas to work with, what would what would what vision do you have? I'm retired from hair. I know, <laughs> but let, let's let's put it this way. Pretend George Lucas is a superhero. <laughs> You're trying oh to make God. him pop I on the page. I would leave it silver because we need an age superhero yeah. with silver That's hair. Right. Yeah. If and if I could be a superhero at this point, well, there was a point where maybe Revision Man would be like where I go back and <laughs> like that's my superpower is going back and sort of like redoing stuff. But now I, I think maybe like. Uh, uh, the philanthropists would be like, because I give a lot of money to education. I give, a, if you listen to stuff on NPR, I'm constantly like, the Lucas Foundation funds a lot of good things. Okay, well, if if I made you a superhero in comics, yeah, would you then promise not to write any female characters? You don't want me to write female characters? No. <laughs> what if I write one who's real smart, real strong, kicks ass? But you have to be capable of writing that. Yeah. And you have to believe it in your heart and I do. know that it can be true. I do believe it. Prove that. Okay. By well, one female character that you've written previously. Uh, would you see the movie Strange Magic? <laughs> Did you see the movie Strange Magic? <laughs> no. All right. Well, then you don't know what you're talking about. because. Oh, I but bet here's I the do. thing. Here's the thing. You have that in common with a lot of people. <laughs> Strange Magic was a movie. Did they forget to put that in the vault? No, no, they didn't put it in the vault. I'll tell you what they did. So Strange Magic was a movie that I made because I said that Star Wars was for boys and I wanted to make a movie for girls. That's a thing that George Lucas I said. I right, said you, it. All right, you are now truly forbidden. I know, but here's the thing. It, it's a it's a CGI animated jukebox musical about fairies who live in the woods. It's kind of Shakespearean. And... Uh, part of the deal when I sold everything to Disney was I said, you got to finish this movie I'm working on. So they finished it, and they released it under the Touchstone Pictures label, which is a zombie label. It, 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 this imprint does not exist anymore. And the same year that The Force Awakens came out and was the number one grossing movie of the year, Strange Magic also broke box office records <laughs> because it was the you lowest... don't say. It was the lowest grossing... Uh, <laughs> animated movie ever to be released on 3,000 screens. Okay, so how many girls watched this movie that you made for girls? Well, when I, w there was a, a, like a girl having a birthday party was out at the screening I went to. <laughs> she, all her friends were there. They had a ball, and that's true. <laughs> it's true. That is true. There was a birthday party there, and then a bunch of people who were part of this talk show went to see it on opening weekend, because that's the only chance you got to see it. You didn't see it on opening weekend. You're going to wait until it pops up every now and then on Disney Plus for like a month and then they pull it. I, it was accidentally a limited engagement. <laughs> yeah. You know, like they say, a limited event. Uh -huh. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> it was only in theaters for a week. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> but, but anyway, I, the point is I try my best <laughs> and try to get better. Isn't that, isn't that what we should be encouraging? Well, yes, we should be encouraging that, but sometimes things just still have to stay in the vault. All right. You don't make it out of the vault. Well, I guess I'm just an old man who can't learn anything new. Well, no, let's Aww. turn this into say that. a learning experience. Okay, Gail, I am interested because uh, George has some admitted weaknesses here, right? What are the things, as someone who, who loves genre and now gets to write in genre, what are the things, the fundamental failings you find in the female characters George has written? And if you had to give them productive notes, what would they be? <laughs> Outside of stop writing. I know that's the easy one. Because I did We've stop writing. I'm retired. I just make it my museum. <laughs> they need to be fully rounded characters with their own motivations. Okay, their I don't own do that generally anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's actually equal opportunity in that sense. Yeah. Broad strokes. <laughs> There's a big boulder running out from him. He's going to run fast. That's rounded. <laughs> Maybe the most rounded character we've ever yeah, written. The most well-rounded character I ever wrote was that big boulder that <laughs> goes after Indiana Jones. You don't get much rounder than that. Look at it rolling. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so well-rounded, what's the other one? <laughs> they have to have their own motivations aside from the male characters that they're appearing on screen with. Yeah, th uh, you blew up my planet. That's a motivation. <laughs> you blew up my planet in front of me, like you invited me up here and you, and you said, you gonna show me something? What is it? That's my planet. What are you doing? You blew it up. <laughs> Motivated. Yep, you don't automatically put them in teeny, skimpy, dimpy costumes. What do you mean, dimpy? <laughs> teeny, I'll confess. <laughs> skimpy, I'll confess. But what's dimpy? Just dumb. Dumb? Oh, okay. Yeah, you got to take that one now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take it on the chin, George. I'll take it. Yeah, pretty dimpy. Yeah. Although I have to ask you, did you write the ending to that scene where Leia actually takes Jabba out, or did someone else, like maybe Carrie Fisher, Fisher offer that solution? No, she was always gonna kill him. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Although he might not be dead. <laughs> is he, has he been well, worse than murdered? No, well, that's the thing. Nobody, <laughs> what we're learning is that in that movie, nobody in that barge died. I suspect he's not dead. I suspect he's a little burned. <laughs> Probably looking around like, what happened to my barge? I, I'm like half expecting Irvin Kushner to come back as a character in the next Star Wars. They'll start reviving behind the scenes crew people who died. <laughs> Gail, have you ever had sort of even the ideation of what you would write if you were to write a Star Wars project? Is there a story in a general sense, you'd be interested in telling. Yes, I, it almost happened right before Disney, Marvel, the whole thing happened. So and was this I Dark Horse? Still had Star yes, Wars? Yes, yes. You know comics, dude. I do. Awesome. Watto is a fan. Um, I, I know comics, too. I wanted to too. write a huge epic story where Leia led an army of Wookiees into battle. I like it. Yeah, it was going to be awesome. Maybe someday still. So, wow. yeah. It sounds I great. I don't know why we're not getting along better, Gail. <laughs> I, I, I like I, your work. Wait, I have a question for okay, you. Okay, yeah. So, I've been watching The Mandalorian. Yeah, good okay. stuff, right? Yeah, good You like that Baby stuff, Yoda? But you didn't write it, right? No, but I said make sure that Baby Yoda gets training. Okay, so you're the Yoda expert then, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so... I'm a Yoda expert. Oh. Not the. You're not the Yoda expert? Nah, there's a lot of people now who are experts. Oh, okay. I'm well, not in control of it, so it's hard. They keep changing it. <laughs> But I'll, yeah, I'll answer anything. Okay, well, I was wondering, since now we've got little baby Yoda. Yeah, cute guy. So somehow something had to happen to create this baby. Yeah. So I started thinking, well, what is the single scene like on Dagobah? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. now I figure that you're like the only person that would know. Yeah. And that could explain it to me so that I could maybe get it out of my head or maybe have it burned in my yeah. head forever, either one. Yeah. Uh, the, the single scene on Dagobah is thriving. Ooh, okay. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. Oh, George. George, don't do this. Don't do this. Shaniqua, would you, you like take to this trade this places with me? <laughs> Do we want to uh, turn I, around? I'm sorry. Paul? Shalewa, Gail, should we all look this way? Uh, oh, absolutely. I just feel... Pa Paul, can I get a, uh, I hate sangria, it's coarse and it gets everywhere, please? Thank you. He'd rather drink a large pitcher of milk than talk about the uh, dating scene on in Dagobah. How's it go? Oh, wow. Oh, look over, over here. Look over here. Yeah, I'm no, 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 no. Disgusted. I this am is terrible. Uh, I, oh, ahead. he's done. He's all done. He's he gave done? up. No. Is he really done? He's he's holding his head. He's clutching his temples. <laughs> he does not. He's shaking a little too. You said George, do you need a bucket? <laughs> I mean, Just I, in case. I saw where the puke bags were. Thank you, Paul. You said he was done. He went back. Shalay, well, what's your favorite joke? Help. What's my what? Help. <laughs> Sh guys, Paul, look over here. Look over here. Don't look. Don't look. Don't look. Don't Shalewa, look. what's your favorite movie? Let's start there. Patrick. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Yeah. We're, bring we're the all, attention we're over here. Focus. Patrick, we're when, pulling focus. Yeah. When you're wearing that outfit yeah. and going attention Come over on. here. Hey, guys, we're going to board the Jungle Cruise <laughs> over on this way. <laughs> 
Oh you my goodness! So you're no the mic with Hi guys, I'm Skipper Patrick. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming. Uh, <laughs> Have you shown the audience this special feature of the visor you're wearing? I did show. Uh, yeah, did. I did okay, show. They saw the flip. The, yes, the. Uh, oh Shalira, wow. what's your yes. favorite movie? Don't look that way. Look I this way. Not, I will not look that way. My favorite, uh, my favorite movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's it's so hard. It depends on the day, really. <laughs> you know, movies they just they speak to different parts of your soul, and mm -hmm. and it just depending on. Yep. It could be the weather could determine yeah. which one. Or yeah. Am I in the mood for Queen Latifah? Or yeah. It just it, it's so hard to decide. Yeah. Um. I, I I you know I I I would say a movie that played a very uh, formative um role in my life. Well, there were two of them that I probably uh -huh. saw around the same time. You uh -huh. know. I would go uh, the OG Muppet movie as okay. a good one. Okay. Oh, Great. favorite. Yes. Oh well, I movie? truly did not think y'all were listening to me. 1978. Um, and uh, and then uh, I, well, you know, Fame, the movie Fame, sure. yes. is uh, the reason I wear leg warming warmers today. Really? Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. It's because it was a. How's he nope, doing? No, we're almost done. We're almost Don't done. Put that Hang in on. my direction. That's great. <laughs> Which, of course, is another dance movie. I do love dance. Yes. I love it so much. Uh, just. The language of motion, um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, the Muppet movie uh, played played a big big part. We now saw he's the mixing movie Roy Rogers yeah. with Mel. This is truly so. gone into a horror scene. <laughs> Should we check in with the tattoos? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. How oh are y'all doing over there? Patrick oh my with gosh. The tattoo report. All right. Oh wow. So hang on. What are we at right now? Do we have a count? Twenty-seven sheets. Or <laughs> Two hundred and seventy dollars worth of temporary tattoos. According to the ten dollar price. Oh, okay. So twenty-seven sheets times seven. Times seven. Right. Man, give me one second. Okay. Uh, twenty-seven sheets times seven. Don't don't. Is currently. No spoilers. No spoilers. A hundred and eighty-nine tattoos. Thank you, Paul. I think. I think we can get to five hundred. There is so much going on right I, now. I do love that the Joko Cruise is probably the old, only audience we will ever have where you can pose a multiplication <laughs> problem like that. Yeah. And 18 members of the audience <laughs> yell, out, yell the, out the answer the correct before answer. you take the phone out of your pocket. Yes. <laughs> that is amazing. Amazing. So why is a drink full of eyeballs yes. not nearly as disgusting as... <laughs> <laughs> as a picture <laughs> of Because milk. I'm All willing right. to bet not a third <laughs> of the audience has an eyeball-like tolerance issue. Yes. <laughs> Whereas some of us literally carry lactate around in our tote bags. <laughs> I don't know. So I don't think I would painful. tolerate eyeballs too well. Watto took George Pussy Jackass forever recently. Oh, sure. <laughs> and now he's been on this whole kick. <laughs> <laughs> Are you regretting your life decision? No? Okay. George, can you say I'm George Lucas and welcome to Jackass? I'm, Dr I'm George Lucas and welcome to Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> One more time, I couldn't make that out. Use the bib. Use the bib if you're going to spit up. Use the bib. <laughs> and also, point the other direction, please. Yeah, do not look it up. <laughs> you can do it. Come on, George. <laughs> you're on a boat. I'm George Lucas, and welcome you're, to Jackass. <laughs> I'm George Lucas, and welcome to Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. It does, it, I know it's not much. It looks like so much to me right now. No, that's a lot. I know, but like it's only a little bit left, but it just feels like a lot. <laughs> and I know I shouldn't complain because there are babies in this world who would be so thrilled with this. Yeah. You know? But they don't know any better, George. I bet Bat Baby would love this. Like, you gave this picture to Bat Baby, he'd be like, I'm the happiest bat in the whole bat family. All this milk. <laughs> Time to look back over this way. Oh, gosh. 
Wado, do you want to ask a question or should I? I, I mean, have I, a but look, where's Paul going? What's yeah, he Paul, doing? don't bring Go in away, any more Paul. milk. <laughs> we're still in No, I don't need it fancy. I just need it down I my don't throat. Need it. <laughs> What, what is your I'm sorry I snapped guys? at you, Paul. I'm sorry I snapped at you, Paul. It's yeah. not me. It's not you, Paul. It's the milk talking. <laughs> the uh, the person getting the tattoos yes. right now. Hi, I have a quick Hi. question for you. Yes. Do you have a day job that you will be returning to? Uh, I work at Disney World, so yeah. <laughs> oh, so no. Uh, are you working this weekend? Yeah, because Wado, we George, and I are going to Disney World after this. Yeah. Great. Oh, okay. So she's great, great, not great. sure. All right. Well, I, I have a question. I'm sorry. I have a follow-up question. Yes. I, I know they've changed some of the rules recently, but famously Disney had the very strict uh, guidelines about how cast members could look, the right. length of mustaches, uh, hair, piercings, and such. Is there anything in the book that prohibits you having... 1,000 <laughs> temporary tattoos on your person. There, there is nothing in the book about temporary tattoos. Beautiful. <laughs> Let's air Look butt this shit. Look Let's air that. butt this shit on through. Keep going. Let's do it. Let's air butt it to management. Forehead, back of the neck, front of the neck. <laughs> <laughs> They're temporary, JPEG. That's you great. You can't say anything. That's What's fantastic. been uh, the, your favorite thing you've done on the boat this week? I uh, I think um, uh oh, what happened? Forge has like an inch left. <laughs> uh, wow, my favorite thing on the uh, my favorite thing on the boat is probably um, the Frogger uh video yeah. game. I'm not good at it, but it is one of my favorite uh, musical um interludes sure. is the frog. I really, I, I'm bad at video games in general, and I kind of only judge them by the music. <laughs> and uh, and Frogger's a good one. I like the nice, simple, I like an, a simple Atari jam. You how's the Frogger melody go? So how does the Frogger one go? Yeah. Right, that's Frogger? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we? Can we? Let's get everybody to sing that. Do, shall I pitch it lower? Because I didn't know it would be that high for me. Yeah, let's do, do it. Let's anyone? Any? Uh, my Atari Twenty Six Hundred uh, heads, just chime in with it. We're ready. Yeah, fantastic, wonderful. You guys are great. Uh, Chilewa, yes. uh, for, for those who did not see uh, your wonderful uh, performance the other night here on the main stage, oh, yes, you did a you. bit about the Tetris theme as well. I did. This seems to be a, a little is, obsession. It is a little bit of an obsession, yeah. yes. It There, I, who knows where to look, really? Who knows where to look? No, yeah. no good place. No, no, there's no good place. Um, yeah, I do. I love the Tetris theme song. Yeah. Actually, all right, there's the one that everyone knows that plays while you're playing, and my, my knowledge of it is really kind of only based on the Game Boy version. Mm. So then there's the part where it's over, and you get to like put your initials in, and it has this really nice, lilting, very melancholy tune. Could that you perform plays. it for us? I not don't to put know. You on the spot. That one is okay. more of a feeling. It's tough to do. That one, I feel like it, someone's got to join. Like, it's. Do, does anyone know what I'm talking about? It's not the normal, like, Tetris one. Not the boop, boop, doo -doo, boop, doo -doo, boop, doo -doo. Not that one, but it's the one that sounds like it's a folk song. Does anyone even know what I'm talking about? Kind of, if you played it on Game Boy. Oh, my gosh, that one's beautiful. It used to bring me to tears, also because I am bad at Tetris. So <laughs> that also brought me to tears. It but it's, it's a moment of reflection. It is. It's a moment for you to sit and go, where did those two hours go? <laughs> yeah.
just staring at a green screen. I think George has opened up a box of Valentine's Day cards. No, there's these are friendship exchanges uh, that I thought we would pass out because I feel like we're really bonding, right? These are yeah. Star Wars friendship exchanges. We don't have enough for it. Well, we might have enough Is for everybody. Is it safe for him to move? I don't know. We will all find <laughs> out together. Yeah, George, I'm are you going to walk? Is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You have to give the man credit. He knows his limits. Yeah. <laughs> is, is that what we give George Lucas credit for? Knowing his limits? He always knows when he to knows stop. He knows when to stop. He always knows how to identify the line. <sighs> how you doing, George? Hey Patrick, come give out these prizes. That is it. Hang on, hang on. Here we yeah, go. Let's get the mic to that. Thank you. All these members pulled up. It goes minor. Wow. It's a minor key. All the hot songs are minor. Single ladies <laughs> is in a minor key. <laughs> Single ladies and the backup Tetris song. <laughs> the backup the Tetris, Tetris song. score Yo, screen. It's so, yeah, they're all just so sad. Wow. <laughs> okay, now to the person in the audience who just said this is so weird. <laughs> What of the what, 12 what, which bars? <laughs> yeah, I know. Playing music off of someone's phone? That's crazy. <laughs> Patrick, come give out some of these prizes. Oh, oh, there are more prizes. Do you want me, George, do you want me to give them out? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I think maybe if you would like to get one of George's prizes, you're going to have to move a lot closer to the yeah. stage. I think George is an angry don't. milk drunk. <laughs> I don't I don't know <laughs> if Don't throw this. <laughs> don't throw that. Don't throw that. <laughs> this is going to this guy right here. Oh wow. No, Paul, I can't drink any more milk, oh Paul. <laughs> Paul <laughs> George, George, listen to me. You don't you just because it's there. You don't have to drink it. Really, you don't. Paul. This is a waste of milk. I didn't order m an extra milk, Paul. George, you don't have to drink it. I don't. No. I don't have to drink milk. I don't. You don't, don't want have to, drink. to. Paul, you can drink it though. Paul, drink the milk. <laughs> Wow. All of it, all of it. Paul of it. <laughs> Paul of Paul it. it. Paul of it. Paul of it. Paul loves it. Paul loves it. Paul loves it. Paul loves it. I actually hate the taste of milk. This is really freaking this me out. This is truly same here. This oh is my truly God. disgusting. I, I have not drank milk in decades. <laughs> You are adults. You are adult men. You do not need milk. <laughs> no, but I like it. That said, fuck all y'all. You're not the boss of me. <laughs> now, George, we should do, let's give tattoos like uh, a countdown because we got to start wrapping up soon. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> How much longer do you want the tattoos to go? Should we stop now? Uh, oh, it's a timed event? I think we... <laughs> Patrick, George has reset. Be gentle with him. He's back to factory settings. <laughs> we need a milk intervention up here. Oh, I'm not getting George. in between. I'm not intervening with him in this milk. Or milk byproducts. George, do you need to walk it off and or okay, lie we're down? Okay, we're going to waddle and I'll handle this. <laughs> Y'all broke George Lucas. You should be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> the internet tried, Disney tried, but the Joko Cruise finally it did, did it. It did it. It did it. <laughs> I, I truly From what don't I can see, I think doing. he'll be okay in a few minutes. How's it looking? False alarm. 
Uh, does anyone in the audience own a record player? <laughs> All right. Uh, this isn't going to be fair. Don't worry. Uh, it w this won't be fair. I don't how know how to do this. What do we have left, George? Do we have four? We have four copies of this record left. Is We're, oh, we will, oh, oh, to go to them? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I do feel like the tattoo people. Well, do they have record players? Will you commit to buying a record player? Turntables. <laughs> I feel like we're asking a lot. <laughs> like, will you put these tattoos on and also purchase a record player? Sure, sure. Well, I want to give them something. That's the thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. What about memories? Let's give let's <laughs> give two to the two to the tattoo people, and we'll give two to the audience. George, how's that sound? That sounds fair. Great. All right. Who in the audience has a record player? And who in the audience like really really wants this? Be, go, to the back, go to the back. Go to the back. Okay, I'm gonna give one to All this the way guy right the back. here. The back. He, I should have said the back. I trust him. I trust I, that. I gotta give one there. Know and one in the do. back. All right. I see next to the pole waving in the back. Yes, yes, yes. You. <laughs> yeah. Don't throw. Don't. Oh. Yes. Here we go. Yay. This is fun. You're going to enjoy it. Happy birthday, Shouty. All right. So we're going to uh, let's check in on these these last tattoo applications with that last one you just did. What are we at? Two hundred and seventy three. Two hundred and seventy three tattoos. I mean, that's great. Wait, in addition to. So that's thirty nine. Oh, man. Thirty nine tattoo. Uh, uh, separate pieces of paper. Sheets. Times Sheets. seven. Just like the 39 p episodes of Detours, Wada. Wow. Oh. This feels serendipitous. It does. Can I read some of the tracks here as we decide who to give these final two uh, albums out to? Uh, included on this soundtrack, uh, track five of side B, You Can't Stop the Beat. This song from the Hairspray musical, <laughs> as sung by Vizirian and George R. R. Martin, Feet, Watto, and George Lucas with special guest Bruce Valange. You ever step back and think about how we got here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you also ran right over with special guest Bruce Valange. That feels like <laughs> that's the selling point. A lot of things going on there, to be fair. Good night, but not goodbye, and a day to celebrate two of the songs from the Star Wars holiday special, which George is litigious enough that he didn't want to release even a limited run of albums unless he knew the songs were cleared. And George spent like two months tracking down who had the publishing rights to the songs from the holiday special, which no one has wanted to claim. Th these are the first time they've been licensed it's the anywhere. the first time they've ever been printed anywhere. <laughs> Good for everyone involved. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, the, okay. the, the, the uh, people <laughs> who wrote the songs were the mother and father of singer-songwriter uh, Gillian Welch. Really? Yeah, so she didn't, I don't think she knew that her parents that she actually owned the rights to the song. That is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. To be Gillian Well to be like, I'm sorry, I own what now? Yeah. George like <laughs> followed the chain until he got to her <laughs> and called her and was like, I don't know how to tell you this. Your parents wrote this song that B. Arthur sings <laughs> when she's trying to kick out of everyone out Yo, of the most Eisley Cantina. If those songs are not on the next David Rawlings of Gillian and Right. Gillian Welch album, I don't know what we're doing here. She's got to reclaim them. Of course, <laughs> obviously, in an album of, of uh, George Lucas talk show, track no. number two, Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip, cold open. <laughs> with special guest Robert Wool. Music by Gilbert and Sullivan. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going we're gonna to kill the live stream now, yeah? Yeah. Do we do it? Guys, if you guys are watching the live stream, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Uh, let's you. clap for the live stream watching in their, in their staterooms. Thank you.